video I've been working on has uh, been set up with a control rig to move the eyes of the character. And what I'm trying to do here is create an anticipation that this character will move by using the gaze of the eyes. So as you can see very carefully, the eyes as they're moving along, they do turn before the head moves around. Um, there's a bit of refining to do on this. But it can give a clue if you're watching very carefully these characters. You can see the gaze, um, which is a very subtle way of making a statement about the character, will um, lead this character. So it's very, very good to be able to get this kind of um, subtle movement working on a character. And the rest of the video is going to look at how this was put together in Maya and Motion Builder to allow for this. Um, this motion. So within Maya, here we have the, the camera that we're working with. And if I run through the steps of that, we can run through very slowly. So there is a walk motion on this character, and the eyes just look around the corner. They just sort of look where they're going. I mean, I always tell my kids to, to look where they're going and uh, it's a key thing that people do you're going to look at the space you're going to move into also you're not going to stare at people particularly you're going to look at a space and then move on so there's a kind of avoiding that I don't think this is quite right I think the eyes are a little bit too high in this aspect here so I would probably go back and keyframe them more this window here isn't showing all the elements in the scene. If we look at the perspective view, we'll go back to that and the space bar, we can see what we've got in here and, and how this works. So this is the rig that we've set up and what we're doing is we're connecting the eye sockets to this and we can make this character's eyes move by just moving this NURB circle set Round. So it's a, it's a parented object. So we have um, it's parented inside the skeleton, so it will follow the skeleton as well. So I'll just expand this hierarchy down and it's parented with the head. So we'll just follow along so you can actually not lose this for your character. The actual nerve circle is a hierarchy in itself, and each eye is constrained to. A separate object in there so you can move them independently if you do need to focus up very close if you want to look at the end of her nose you can bring those together um, and you can get that kind of very close-up look there that will make that um, uh, work. so you've kind of got a lot of options in here you've got a lot of control over the eyes like I said I think it was possibly too high in the um, in the image there when we're working with it so it may be that you bring the individual eyes down within that um, just to have the gaze slightly lower slightly more relaxed on the face there so you see there is a control rig in here that's driving this animation um, that isn't actually the bones of this character this character has been downloaded from Autodesk's um, character generator website and it is a reasonably low resolution uh, one but it does have inside it it doesn't have any of the rigging for the facial blends or anything like that it does have a bone attached to the eye and this is skinned this eye is actually skinned onto this bone which is the eye the bone the left eye and the right eye have these aspects what we're doing, we're actually constraining this joint to look at the um, rig that we've created. So I'm just going to go back a few steps and open an empty scene with just this character. So uh, I can find the original one here, this original Maya scene. And I won't save that because it's changed that slightly. So when I bring this into my project, it does have lights in there. I normally get rid of these because the characters that I work with do 
move around and those are very much designed to light the character in situ. I'll try and just highlight one of the eyes in there and that will um, focus in on that using F on the keyboard. That gives me that in the center of my, my screen. I will then go to the curve surfaces here and generate a nerve circle. This I'm going to bring up to eye level. Get that right with the trackpad. Um, I'm going to bring that up to eye level. And if there was a mouse, I will get that a bit more accurate. So I'm just using the, the move tool, select it from here at the left um, mouse as well. And then I'm going to take the rotate tool, just spin that round about 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to tidy that up and just type in the 90 degrees there so it's correct with that. So now I can see that actually that's looking through this fairly, um, looking through that circle, it's fairly well lined up. I'm going to just squash it. And also I'm going to go to modify freeze transformations. This will zero that out in that position. And that will mean that I'm not going to have any um, strange scaling when I do parenting with that as well. So following that, I'm going to create other circles. Well, I can create other circles, or I could duplicate that one um, and use that as a basis. I'm actually creating circles because I want to represent the eyes as a more round shape. So I might not have done that in the previous example. But as I take this into... Um, parented in there, I can make it much more of an eye shape um, within that. So I'm going to put one scale um, for each of those scale attributes there. And if I zoom in on that, I can see that that's a small circle which I can use to represent left eye. And if I duplicate that, just move that over to the other side becomes our character's right eye on the left of our screen. So then I can highlight both of those and you can um, modify parent these. No, you can edit parent these together um, with this nerve circle or you can middle click and drag them. That's my normal way of working. So now I'm just going to rename that as I. I can also just make sure these are lined up um, how I want them. And I can change the translation of these if I want to as well. So they kind of just, they are in line, absolutely fine. Um, but what I do again, I can freeze transformation and zero those out of that as well. So I've just got a, got a zero point, which I know would be the start point here. And it doesn't offset from other aspects. So I can work with that from here. The next thing I want to do is look at the animation menu set. And I'm going to use a constraint. So first of all, I'm going to select the object that is going to be the target of this constraint, the uh, target for the constrained item. And then I'm also going to pick the object that I am going to constrain to this. So this object here will follow the first one I picked, that one there. So now when I press constrain, we have a few options here. The one I'm going to choose is aim. I want this eye to aim at this nerve circle. You can see in here I've got this rotation in blue here. So this is, means that I um, am affecting this uh, joint there with this um, constraint. Similarly, I'm going to take the right eye and the right eye bone there, okay, joint, and do exactly the same thing. I'm going to constrain that using an aim. And that comes up in there. So now that's all I need to do to get these eyes to move in the correct way. So I should now be able to, if I can see this properly, so if I go to a four-up view, 
I can then set this to work for me. I can also duplicate this perspective window. So I want to have a close up on the face in uh, this window here. But if I get an outliner up, the panel outliner from the panels here, I can duplicate this perspective window. So then I can use that again and set that up. But in this one here, I can zoom out uh, until I can see the elements I need to use. Now that's not set up to show all of my objects. So I'm going to just show all in that one. And then I can start working with that one in here. So I'm looking at this for the effect. And if I highlight this nerve curve here, the eye rig, I can then move that. I can see the eyes moving left and right. I can keyframe these. So I'm on frame zero here. I can just take that back to the zero. I can set a keyframe for that there. Um, I'm setting it for all aspects of that. I could do it a bit more subtly and just do the uh, translation. Um, but I'm going to just bring that backwards and forwards and test that out. So I can see that there, and then I can see, actually, if the gaze wants to go down, I can set another keyframe there. So slow look down, we'll look, if I just click on the correct window, let's preview that, it doesn't look like that. So you're kind of looking down slowly at an object. So you kind of work with the speeds of that afterwards. So what I'm going to do is just take that back a few steps. Um, like I say, I would want to normally just keyframe on the translate. But before I do that, I want this rig to follow with my character. So it's really important now to just parent that to the right part of the body. And if I have it to the top of the head, this head end here, I can then have that follow along with whatever the character does. So I should be able to follow that and use that um, as we need to. So now if I do take this spine here, I can see that that rig will move with it and the aim of the eyes will be um, appropriate to that. So they will stay relative to the head. So I can make that work um, in a few ways there. Similarly, when I want to work with these independently, I can keyframe these individual elements as well. I can have one eye moving um, or not. Um, in that. So these constraints are very powerful and give you, allow you a lot of control. So just to make sure that can work when the character is walking, I'm going to test this within Maya. You can do this in other software. You can send it to Motion Builder and um, for that you would select all these items here and do a file send to Motion Builder, send as we've seen or add to current scene and you can attach this character here to a source. You can also do this within Maya. If I import a motion capture file, just a, a walk, um, and if I set the source of this character in the HIK window to the mocap example there, then I should be able to see this move along um, in the correct way. So it is going to be a little bit zoomed out. They're walking forward, so I have to be prepared to follow with that, but I can see this, um, these eye parts um, will follow with this as it's, as it's moving. So we'll take that now to this aspect here, and again if I have this one, this camera zoomed right in in that place, I can see that that's working fine with this, and it's all relative to the camera's own movement um, within that motion capture file. Similarly, if you're keyframing this and using the control rig, you can have the same effect um, with that as well. And um, you can keyframe this either as a layer or as a, um, just keyframe it straight on the, on the master layer here as well. So once you've done that, you keyframe as normal, use the dope sheet to get the timings and um, away you go. It's a great way to improve your look of your animation. And as I said, if you can create anticipation as you're going around a corner or you're going to have an action, the eyes will lead. So you can use that to, to set up a very subtle way of showing um, anticipation in your animations.